This is Sarah with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in this video I want to be doing a quick review over Abruptio Placente versus Placenta Previa. Now in the previous videos we did an in-depth discussion about these two conditions so if you haven't watched those videos be sure to check those out. And as always at the end of this YouTube video you can take the free quiz that will test you on these conditions. So let's get started. First let's start out talking about Abruptio Placente. Okay this is a detached issue. So we have had detachment of this placenta prematurely before the baby is born because when does the placenta normally remove itself from the uterine wall? After the birth of the baby because the placenta maintains the pregnancy. It delivers oxygen and nutrients and removes waste from the baby via that umbilical cord. So once that baby's born it doesn't need the placenta anymore. It has mama. But while it is still in the uterus, it needs the placenta. So the placenta can come off of the uterine wall and you can have different types of abruptio placentae, such as partial abruption, where it's partially came off the wall, or total, where it's completely removed itself from the wall. Now let's take a look at placenta previa. Okay, this is an attachment issue. So that placenta hasn't attached where it's supposed to. Like it's supposed to attach in the top part of the uterus or the side. Instead, it's decided to attach somewhere low in the uterus, usually over that cervical opening. And we don't want that because there's issues with that placenta becoming damaged and it can bleed hemorrhage, which will cause issues for mama and baby. And you can have different types of placenta previa, you can have partial, where this placenta is partially covering the cervical opening, or you can have marginal, where the placenta is low line and it's at the edge of the cervical opening, or you can have total, like which is demonstrated in this drawing here, where the placenta is completely covering the cervical opening. And now let's look at the causes. What could cause abruptio placentae? Well, this condition typically occurs in the third trimester. So if mom's blood pressure is not being controlled, she has chronic hypertension, it can lead to this. Also, the development of preeclampsia, or they've had a history of having an abruption in the past, or they've experienced premature rupture of the membranes, they use cocaine, they smoke cigarettes, or they're carrying more than one baby like twins or triplets. They've been pregnant a lot of times before, or they've experienced some type of trauma to the abdomen that has caused that placenta to detach itself. Okay, causes of placenta previa. Advanced maternal age, greater than 35 or older, or they've experienced scarring in the uterus due to surgery, like the removal of fibroids or C-section. Also, carrying more than one child, can cause that as well, like twins or triplets, they've already had a baby in the past, or they use cocaine or smoke cigarettes. Now let's talk about the signs and the symptoms that you can see in each of these conditions. And as I go over them, really commit to memory those differences because that is where exams love to ask you questions. Okay, so to help us remember abruptio placentae, let's remember the mnemonic and the word detach. And to help us remember placenta previa signs and symptoms, let's remember the word previa. Okay, so first let's talk about abruptio placentae. Okay, D for dark red bleeding. Here, a lot of times in abruptio placentae, it can be concealed where the blood is just not readily there where you can see it. So by the time it does come into the vaginal area, it will be dark in color. And then E for extended fundal height. And again, this is from the concealed bleeding. If it stays within the uterus, the uterus can increase in height and that fundal height will increase. And then T for tender uterus. A for abdominal pain slash contractions, the patient may complain of this. And then C for the concealed bleeding, and this bleeding can stay or backflow within the uterus or the abdomen, and the patient can enter shock without you even seeing lots of amounts of blood being lost as you would in placenta previa. 
and then H for hard abdomen, be rigid, and then E for experience DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation. And if the placenta is not delivered promptly after that detachment, this can really occur. And what happens when this placenta detaches itself, it's damaged and it can release large amounts of thromboplastin into mom's circulation, which is going to send off this massive clotting event throughout the body where she has little microembolisms forming in the blood, which is going to block blood vessels, hence blood flow, and it can affect major organs like your brain, your kidneys, lungs, things like that. Well, the body will sense this major clotting event going on, so it tries to help it. So it causes fibrinolysis to happen, hoping to break down that fibrin in those clots to break up those clots and prevent that. But while all this is going on, those clotting factors, those clotting stores are being depleted. So mom doesn't have anything to stop bleeding. And that is a big problem because from where this placenta has came off the uterine wall, it's left a fresh open wound in there. And that wound isn't going to like clot and have a bandaid over it to prevent so much blood loss. So it's just going to bleed and bleed. And she can also bleed in other areas of her body like gums, the IV sites, things like that. So you really have to watch out for DIC with this condition. The last part of our mnemonic, the D for distressed baby. The baby can experience heart rate abnormalities. And again, this is because the placenta has lost its effectiveness. It's detached from the uterine wall. It's not working properly. So baby can start becoming unstable. Now let's look at placenta previa. Okay, P for painless vaginal red bleeding. This can be mild to profuse. So it's going to be bright red. It's not going to be dark like in abruptio placentae. Also R for relaxed, soft, non-tender uterus. It won't be hard and rigid like in the other condition. And then E, episodes of bleeding, not spotting. And this again is most likely going to occur during the third trimester. And as the body prepares for the baby with the cervix thinning, it causes bleeding from where it's tearing the vessels in the placenta. So that's why and when mom will start noticing this bright red bleeding. And then V for visible bleeding, not concealed as in some cases with abruptio placenta. So you're going to see that blood. And then I intercourse post bleeding where after sexual intercourse, they will have bleeding. And that's because right at the cervix is that placenta. And this can be spontaneous or occur during labor. And then A for abnormal fetal position. The baby can be breached as you can see here with the bottom first or they can be transverse lie where they're like lying sideways. And why is that? Well, it's because the placenta is down here and this is where baby's head should be. The baby's head really can't go there since the placenta is in the way. So you're gonna see an abnormal fetal position in this then compared to this condition over here. And the baby's heart rate tends to be normal because we don't have like a lot of damage going on to the placenta like you did over here in abruptio placenta where fetal distress is going to be a lot more common. Now let's take a look at nursing interventions. Okay, if one of these conditions is suspected or actually presenting, there will be no vaginal exams or abdominal manipulation because that can make things worse. And they can take an ultrasound and they can assess what is going on. And one thing I'd like to point out about placenta previa is that a lot of times this is diagnosed at the 20 week ultrasound. They can look at the placenta, see where it's at. And if it's marginal, like low lying down on the bottom, they will monitor that because as the uterus grows and expands, that placenta can move upward, alleviating that placenta previa so it's not over the cervical opening and they'll relook at that at the 32 week ultrasound. But usually if it's completely covering that cervical opening like here, it's usually not gonna move up and they'll have to really monitor them. So keep that in mind. Now with both conditions, there is a risk of hemorrhage. Over here, placenta previa, it's going to be visible. And over here in abruptio placenta, it can be concealed or visible. So keep that in mind. And since it could possibly be concealed over here in abruptio placenta, you want to measure and mark that fundal height and measure the abdominal girth. And you'll, for both conditions, the doctor will order type and cross match. 
in case they need blood. You'll need to get IV access, a CBC, looking at all those levels, clotting levels. What's their RH factor? If they're negative, they'll need Rogam. And monitoring those vital signs every 15 minutes or whatever your protocol is at your hospital. Monitoring for signs of shock. External monitoring of the baby, making sure baby is not in distress. You don't want to use internal. And remember, which condition is going to possibly, there's an increased risk of fetal distress over here with abruptio placentae because that placenta has came off of that uterus wall and it's not supposed to do that and it decreases its ability to function properly. So you gotta watch for that. And a pad count, especially with previa or a linen count, see how much is coming out of the vaginal area, how much blood are they losing because you can typically see it since it's visible. And then side lane positions best because that increases the left side lane, increases perfusion to the uterus. And with this over here, abruptio placentae, you want to monitor for DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation. So look at those lab levels. How are their platelets? Are they decreasing? The fibrogen, is it decreasing? Prothrombone time, is it decreasing? Gum bleeding, look at those gums. You see bleeding, that's not a good sign. Or oozing, especially at injection sites or IV sites, you just see little bit of blood just trickling out and just oozing around the site. That's a red flag. Or petechiae, this is where you have broken capillary blood vessels or ecchymosis. And monitoring for those microemboli where those little clots have got in the blood vessels and are stopping perfusion. So you could see neuro changes if it's with the brain, chest pain or shortness of breath if it's in the heart or the lungs or a decreased urinary output if it has affected the kidneys. And it, all these cases are really, the treatment depends on how far along mom is, how severe it is, is it complete, is it partial, either one of these, what's gonna happen and what the doctor is gonna order. But always be prepared for delivery if need be. Mom's unstable, this is a total previa, things aren't going good, or a total abruption, probably emergency C-section is where they will be going. Okay, so that wraps up this review over these two conditions. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to take the free quiz and to subscribe to our channel for more videos.